Welcome to the Wednesday Bible study. If you have the Bible, look at the book of Galatians, chapter 6, verse 1 to 10. Book of Galatians, yeah. chapter 6, verse 1 to 10. Book of Galatians, chapter 6, verse 1 to 10. Yeah, do you have the Bible? Yeah, you have the Bible? Yeah, you in these days the people they have the mobile phone Bible. Yeah, brothers, if someone is caught in sin, you who are spiritual should restore him gently, but watch yourself, or you also may be tempted. This is a very important scripture. Yeah, somebody, somebody is caught in sin, yeah, and everybody knows that sins. But you have to be careful. You have to be careful, spiritually, yeah, supporting for them and helping them and restore them gently, not harsh, not judgmental, not critical. I saw the one guy in South Korea, David Cha, is a very popular. You know, man in Korea. I think it's early 40s, young man. He is a pastor, he's a Baptist pastor, he's preaching. <coughs> the Modin watch effort, he committed adultery. When he committed adultery, and then Din watch effort, one other guy, another, another, another pastor, he announced about uh, his sins publicly on the internet. And then uh, this man who had speak. He speak very harshly. He will cry. <laughs> oh, you know what happened? That guy who announced it, yeah, that guy he he get uh, he get a court case by his father-in-law. You know, father-in-law say about his son-in-law. My son-in-law is a demon possessed man. <laughs> Can you imagine? Therefore, you have to be careful. According to Galatians chapter 6, verse 1, Brothers, if someone is caught in a sin, you who are spirit, spiritual should restore him gently. We have to support him for them gently. Yeah? Yeah? Somebody tried to remove, the, remove the, some dust on the, somebody's eyes. But you have what? Crank. <laughs> Crank is like so big. And you don't see your, you know, pole in your eyes, but you want to see that somebody's uh, some dust. It's terrible. You have to be careful. You also may be tempted, you see. You have to be careful. Be careful. Somebody, somebody, oh, I'm okay. Oh, don't be careful. Do you understand? You know, we have to be careful. Every one of you, including me. Yeah? Especially if you're a man, yeah? If you're a man, be careful about uh, sexual immorality. Yeah? Everybody, everybody, you have to be careful. Be careful. Look at verse 2. Carry each other's <coughs> burden, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. Can you carry the burdens of somebody? Somebody's body is a family problem. Somebody's body is a physical problem. One relationship problem, or finance problem, one material problem. We have to support for one another. Yeah, carry each other's burden. Yeah, carry each other's burden. Do you have any burden? Supporting for one another, help one another. It's very very important. Yeah, if anyone think he is a something when he is nothing, he deceive himself. Each one should test his own action, then he can take a pride in himself, without comparing himself to somebody else. For each one should carry his own load. Anyone who receives instruction in the world must share all good things with his instructor. Yeah. You have to bless one another. You know, by the grace of God, I become a preacher. And um, I share the word of the Lord for for in the for the people in the church, even outside of, uh, of the church. And uh, if you get uh, some spiritual help by the pastor or spiritual leader, you can bless them materially, financially as well. This is biblical. 
this this afternoon when somebody cut my hair is a <coughs> twenty pound. Somebody pay for it. <laughs> I appreciate somebody pay for it. And then our our elder brought some vegetable yeah, for for my house. Thank you very much. You know, it's a small things. Small things is, is very powerful. Actually, this evening, one word will come into my heart about opportunity. Can you say to me opportunity? Opportunity. opportunity? opportunity. Do you know that everybody you have opportunity for what? To bless others. We have opportunity for what? To repent your sins. We have the opportunity to suffer for one another. And uh, opportunity to learn. Of the opportunity to start a new life, but we'll see. Do you know the real meaning of opportunity? Yeah, somebody, the arrow, arrow, shoot the arrow, go in front of your eyes. How fast? <coughs> Can you catch? If you go in front of your eyes, movie. <laughs> Do you know real meaning of opportunity? Somebody saw the uh, arrow and catch. That is opportunity, my brother. Yeah, opportunity to start a new life, opportunity to repent your sins. It's opportunity. Yeah, it is opportunity. But some people, yeah, people see that all these circumstances like the, like the, like the destruction, like the like the terrible judgment. But for you and me, you can see it as an opportunity. Do you know that? You can see it as an opportunity. Look at the verse 7. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man leaves what he sows. It's an opportunity. Can you, can you use the opportunity sowing the good seed and you leave what? Good fruit. Whatever you're sowing, the seed, and you get. So you could see it, and you leap the good fruit. Yeah, opportunity. It's everything's opportunity. Yeah, opportunity to support for one another. Of opportunity to help somebody. Who is more blessed? You help somebody, and you receive help. Who is more blessed? Somebody. Yeah. Somebody. You help somebody. It's more blessed. Do you know that? You receive some help from somebody, of course you're blessed, but who is more blessed? You, you, have you help somebody is more blessed. Look at verse 8. The one who sows to please his sinful nature, from that nature will lead uh, destruction. What is sinful nature? Have you heard about the, you know, very well, three things. The sinful nature, lost of eyes, and then lost of Flesh and pride of life. Sinful nature. You need to kill the sinful nature. How often? Daily. Daily. Can you say to each other, you need to, you need to kill the sinful nature daily? Say to each other, you need to kill the sinful nature daily. Another word, Apostle Paul say, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 31, I die daily. daily. <laughs> I die daily. It's a good news. I die daily. If you, you die daily, who shall live daily? Jesus. Your Jesus, my Jesus, shall live daily. Yeah, the one who sows the police is a simple nature. From that nature will live destruction. Do you understand? But look, the one who sows the police the spirit, please the Holy Spirit, from the Holy Spirit will live eternal life. Which do you want? Eternal life or destruction? Which do you want? Eternal you sure? Yeah. You get eternal life. Please the Holy Spirit. Let us uh, please the Holy Spirit. Whenever Paul, Holy Spirit say to you, you have to say, Yes, Lord. Amen. Yes? Can you say, Yes, Jesus? Yes, Jesus. Amen. Amen. If you have that opportunity, brother, Opportunity to start a new life. Yeah, opportunity. Everything is opportunity for your life. Amazing life. Amazing. Yeah. I have opportunity to serving Jesus. I have opportunity to bless the Lord. Yes. 
And look at verse uh, 9. Yeah. Let us not become weary in doing good. For at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. You know, when you're doing, continue doing good, and then sometimes tired, sometimes weary. Why? People don't recognize you, what you're doing. People don't respect you. Therefore, it's easy to give up. But thank you. Can't recognize. Eh? Fix your eyes. Why? What the Bible say? If you do, yeah, doing good, yeah, not give up. Not give up. Yeah, not give up. Never give up, please. Never give up. You know that this is the will of God. You know this is God's calling. But circumstances uh, against you. Situation not good. And then therefore you want to give up? Please stop it. Never give up. Never give up. Never give up to preach the goodness of Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Never give up. Sometimes two times a Muslim attack me. Therefore, I don't preach the gospel for Muslim. What should I do? No. Preach more. Preach more for Muslims. Do you understand? Somebody or oh, you know, two years ago the gangster come with a better bang in my head. Do I need to stop to preach the gospel for gangster? No, I need to do it more for gangsters. I used to remember, I, I used to preach the gospel for gangsters in central London. <clears throat> do you know what you from? One gang leader came to knock on my, my door around 10 p.m. I opened the door. Do you know what he does? He come with a black bag. He said to me, Pastor Paul, I know you're working very hard, but especially your job is a very dangerous job. Uh, it's okay, but I, I know where I'm going. For to me, leave his cry to die again. But do you know what he say? Your job is very dangerous. I want to give you something, very good price. I said, what is it? <laughs> do you know, he, he come, uh, after 10 o'clock in the evening, he come with a black bag. He say, I have inside this black bag. What is that? I saw a very nice gun. Gun. <laughs> Because he said, my job is very dangerous. And they, you know, over 200 bullets. And I ask him, how much is it? He said, this is all total over 2,000 pounds. But because of I respect you, I give you only 400 pounds. Now, is a 400 pounds is a good price? Yeah? Good price to money. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, maybe someone did. Thank you very much. <laughs> Do you know, I told him, he, but he respected me. But he told us, he saw that how I dangerous when I'm preaching in front of gangsters. And then he want to sell the gun cheap price. And I told him, I have the gun already. Really? Show me your gun. Show me. <laughs> you want to see my gun? Do you know what I did? He was curious to see my gun and I put my hand in my pocket. I'll show you. You know, my gun is very powerful than any other gun in this world. Most powerful gun. He said, Neil, show me, show me. I said, I have the gun which is in the name of Jesus. <laughs> this is my gun. In the name of Jesus, my gun. He was laughing. And I pray for him, brother, I don't need uh, your gun. I don't need it. Because Jesus is my protector. Jesus is my helper. He, 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 he's supporting for me. He, he's leading me. I don't need uh, your gun. And I bless him. He's gone away. Do you know why I say like this? Never become weary when you're doing good. Never give up. Even sometimes, two times, police come and disturb you. Sometimes, two times, uh, you know, council come to you and disturb you. Sometimes, uh, you know, firefighters they come and um, disturbing you. Yeah? Sometimes, uh, bad bug come and disturbing us. Because of bad bug, you need to run away? No, kill the bad bug. 
until when? You until they die. Yeah, thank you very much. Until all the bad books are total. Yeah, we have to never give up. But look at the verse 10. Therefore, as we have opportunity, you see now, so you have opportunity. Yeah? How many of you have opportunity now? Everybody have opportunity to start a new life. Amen? You have opportunity to serve in God. You have opportunity to preach the gospel. You have opportunity to, to bless the name of the Lord. You see, therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. We have opportunity to bless others. We have the opportunity to learn. We have the opportunity yeah, to write down the book. We have opportunity to serve others. Please, don't misuse your opportunity. Use your opportunity to glorify God. Use your opportunity to serve one another. Use your opportunity yeah, to magnify the name of the Lord Jesus. It's very, very important. Tonight, please remember the one word, opportunity. Father, I have a major opportunity to glorify your name. Yeah? Everybody say that this is uh, not opportunity, this is a terrible disaster. But still, somebody see the opportunity. Yeah? Everybody say this is a uh, terrible, no. We cannot do anything, no noise. But still, you can see the opportunity. Can I ask something? Who, 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 who killed the Goliath? David. David. Do you know how, how tall the Goliath, uh, Goliath? Anybody knows? Over three meters. Over three meters. <coughs> Just over three meters. You know, very tall man. Anybody is over two meters? Do you know? So big, so high. How how big the how big the the head of Goliath? It is two times bigger than my face. <laughs> Do you know? <coughs> do you know everybody's carrying a Goliath? Yeah? yeah. But David, he saw the opportunity. Why? Because the Goliath's forehead is bigger than any normal people. Yeah. And he saw the opportunity. Okay. Only here is big. Because he got full armor, cover his most of his body. But he saw the big forehead. Okay, I get it. He saw the opportunity. Great opportunity. Why? Because his face is big. Head is head is big. Opportunity. Can you see <coughs> your problem, your challenge as opportunity? Yeah? Unfortunately, most people, the problem or difficulties never ever be opportunity. No, no, it's opportunity. Great opportunity. For me, for me, oh, I don't think about the positive attitude. No, no, it's nothing to do with this one. It's, you know, you can the scripture. Therefore, as you have opportunity, you and me have opportunity for what? To doing good. God gave us an amazing opportunity to start a new life. You know, Sister Kim, Jesus loves us so much. How do you feel? You okay? Better now? Your skin is okay? Yeah. Do you know she has got the opportunity to fasting to start a new life? It's good news for her, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Good for you. She saw all the skin problem, all difficulty, and then she find, oh, now is the time I can fast. I can surrender my life to Jesus. It's a great opportunity. Therefore, Everyone see the this man Goliath, troublemaker, big big enemy, and then this is a Palestine great soldier, but David he saw him as opportunity to kill the Goliath, and he killed the Goliath. What happened? Of course, he training, he ran away from King Saul for thirteen years. 
you know, for you and me, every situation is, you have to open your eyes and your opportunity eyes. Amen. <laughs> open your eyes to see your circumstance and your opportunity. For what? To repent your sins. Do you know that when, when Jonah disobeyed God, what happened? He was in where? Stomach of a fish. Is it good news or bad news? Very good news. Do you know? <laughs> Jonah, Jonah saw his uh, uh, stomach of a fish it's so dark, but he saw the opportunity. What kind of thing? Repent the sins. Repent the sins. Start a new life. Therefore, when you live in this world, any good news or bad news is a opportunity. Yeah? You have opportunity to glorify God in any circumstance. Any circumstance. You have opportunity to worship in God. I still remember I didn't have enough food. When I didn't have enough food, I talked with my wife fasting for three days. If you don't have more, you don't, if you don't have enough food, sometimes we fasting for five days. If you don't, we fasting seven days. Actually, within seven days, God provides all our food. And then one day I told my wife, we need a fasting for at least three days because we don't have food. Let's pray. We're fasting. We drink only water. Guess what, Jeff? You know, English homeless, they love to eat the English breakfast. They like a sausage, bacon, you know, mushroom, and egg, egg, and all these things. And then whenever they come to my house, they open the fridge, and then they make it their own food. And they, when they open up our fridge, nothing. Do you know what they say? Pastor Paul, why you didn't share with us? You should tell us. You know, for me, a fasting, three days. For them, starving. <laughs> Do you know, poor Pastor Paul, they, do you know what I did? Fasting. I was fasting. This uh, homeless, the, at the time I knew there around 500 homeless in central London. These homeless uh, talked to each other. Do you know what they, they, are, they spread the rumor. That rumor is more fast than internet. They talked to each other, we need to do something for Pastor Paul's song. Do you know, for me, not have a Enough food is a, I see that opportunity for what? To fasting. To come close to God. To glorify God. Guess what happened? For two weeks, homeless collected the, collected the money from the, from the street. For two weeks. Can you imagine? Continue to come. And they knocked the door. Pastor Paul, Pastor Paul, we heard about the Come with the Tesco, Tesco plastic bag. Full of coin. So heavy. Average around 50 pounds. So many, two weeks, people come. I heard about here you are. So many. I think over 1,000, around 1,500 pounds for two weeks. And uh, my tears are rolling on my face. For me, I didn't have enough money to buy the food. But I saw this thing, this, that time, and the fasting, and come close to God. And then, you know, what God spoke to me when I listed plenty of money to buy the food, God spoke to me, you see, I used the homeless to bless you. <laughs> if God used the homeless to bless me, why are you worried? You don't need to worry about anything. Can you say amen? amen. Say, teacher, don't worry about anything, say, teacher. Don't worry about anything. Who look after you? Almighty God. Just uh, from now on, open your eyes. Your eyes is the uh, eyes of what? Opportunity. Yeah? When you open your eyes, you can see opportunity of God. You can see the hands of God. You can see the power of God moving in your circumstance. Please, you know, even your enemy attack you, go for you. Give thanks to God. Who is the enemy of Hanna? Anybody knows? Punina. Punina mocked and attacked her. Do you know Hanna? She has got that opportunity for what? To come before the God. Pour out her heart before God in the temple. Yeah? 
enemy attacked. And Hannah, okay, I don't need to fight with you. I need to come to God. <laughs> and she conceived a baby. What is the name? Samuel. Samuel. Do you understand? Without the punina, <laughs> she cannot get the Samuel. Therefore, God used the enemy to bless you. Do you know that? Thank God for enemy. Do you understand? You have to see. Age of Trinity. In 1980, there's a number five, five great revivalists in South Korea. Churches grow everywhere in Korea in 1980. One, two, three, four, Pastor Paul and Shin Sang Jung, all the Korean pastor, four of them. But one guy from North Korea, who is that? Can you imagine? God used these five people to bring the revival in South Korea. But four of them South Korean pastor. But one guy, North Korean guy. Can you guess who is that? Founder of North Korea. What's his name? Kim Il Sung. He's my pastor. Why is a number five? He's a he, he, you know, he, he announced always, I want to I wanna burn the soul by fire. I want to destroy the Korea by nuclear weapon. What? Continue to speak like that. Do you know what? Ever? Korean Christians, they pray and fast, oh God, protect us from North Korean you know, armies. And they catch the fire in South Korea. Therefore, one, two, three, four, four Korean pastor, number five, enemy. <laughs> Do you understand? North Korean enemy, Kim Il Sung. He was like the, you know, like a, like a King Pero. Do you know Pero? Without the Pero, Moses was very boring, I think. <laughs> Do you understand? Moses said to Pero, God spoke to me very clearly, let my people go. Let Israel people go. He said, Pero said, okay, let you go. <laughs> Not very <laughs> interesting. But God is the one to control Pero's heart. God gave the mercy for Moses, but God hardened the heart of peril. Do you, do you understand? Therefore, Moses, he saw the opportunity. Oh, God, he saw to listen to glory. Actually, what the Bible says, God is the glory through peril. Can you imagine? God is the glory through what? Enemy of God! Because he wants to show the power for somebody need to do it as a uh, wicked actor. Do you understand, Mr. Perro? God is the glory and honor and power. But uh, can I encourage all of you, please, uh, you can look at your circumstance with the uh, eyes of uh, opportunity. Yeah? You have uh, eyes of opportunity today, yeah, man? Your eyes is transformed tonight. You have eyes of opportunity. This morning I catch it. Where is the electric cigarette? <laughs> I check his pocket. I throw away. Brother, enough is enough. You still love me? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> you have? No, no okay. Happy. Okay. Do you understand? Opportunity is very, very important. I encourage all of you. Don't look at uh, somebody with uh, with uh, you know, eyes of evil or eyes of uh, you know, you know, uh, negative thought. But look at the situation. Yeah, look at the uh, brother sisters with the eyes of opportunity. You have opportunity to serve, my dear brothers and sisters. You have opportunity to bless others. If somebody weak, what shall we do? Go there. Can I help you? We can lift up them and help them. Yeah? We're going to bring the 2,000 the French leaflet. We have uh, many opportunity for what? Stamp. <laughs> yeah. Everything is an opportunity. Working for Jesus. Can you stand up? Can you lift up your hand? Can you say to me in the name of Lord Jesus? I have a great opportunity to serve you, to bless you, to serve others, to bless others. 
use my life to glorify your name. I don't misuse the opportunity, but I'm going to use this opportunity to magnify your name, to glorify your name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for coming. Please keep on praying for our mission to France. We will leave at 5 a.m. tomorrow morning because our ferry leaves at 8 o'clock. From here to the port around one and a half an hour. I need to be there in one hour advance. Where are you, where are you, where are you driving to? Uh, go to Calais. No, to go to Dover. Dover. Oh, Dover. Dover. And then you get in the ferry over to Calais. Calais, that's right, yeah. And then keep on praying for our journey because of so many restrictions in, in Paris. But we'll go there with a big speaker to preach the gospel. You know, French police is very, very stubborn. But we love the French police. Keep on praying for our journey, pray, pray for protection, pray for good health, pray for many souls come to Lord, come to Lord Jesus. Yeah? From tomorrow until Saturday evening. And the Sunday we have a fun. We're going to big wonderful service on Sunday. After that, on Monday I go to America um, and keep on praying for me for four days three and very short trip and 800 Korean uh, people uh, uh, meeting and for for revival conference in 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 America. Thank you for watching. God bless you. Have a wonderful evening.